Hi guys, so the $1,000 project is bubbling along nicely. Since starting this project, over $45,000 has been saved and invested, and it is providing a passive income of over $2,200 a year. Now, not only am I just a little bit proud, I am blown away by how quickly this money has added up. The whole concept of taking one big goal and breaking it down into bite-sized, manageable and achievable baby goals has really been incredible. And it has built up so much momentum and focus and determination in my life. But most importantly, I actually want to thank you guys for your support and encouragement throughout this process. So thank you. Now, one of the things that actually excites me the most about the $1,000 project is the giving to charity. At the end of each of my deadlines, I would donate as long as I can afford to every year the total amount of passive income earned for that year. And each year I will pick a different charity. Anyway, as you guys also know, the $1,000 project is being turned into a book. It's being published by Penguin Books and it should be on the shelves by January 2018. I'm 80% of the way in writing the first manuscript and it's really got me thinking. It's made me realize that I actually want to be able to do something for charity sooner than my deadline. I think it's so important to be able to give back and help others, especially as your own financial situation improves and strengthens, and especially once you've achieved your own financial goals. So to cut a long story really short, Rocco and I had a trip booked to Bali, and I actually wanted to get Rocco involved in the $1,000 project. We contacted the Jodie O'Shea Orphanage in Denpasar, Bali. We told them that we wanted to help, and we asked them how we could help very kindly accepted our offer and gave us a list of toys that the kids desperately needed. There were such simple things like matchbox toys, little kitchen tea sets, soft toys, a blow up swimming pool, really simple everyday things that we all have in our house that we take for granted. So Rocco and I headed to our local toy shop and we spent over a thousand dollars in toys and I let him walk around the toy shop and pick every single toy both for boys and girls and a whole range of different age groups. And even though he was absolutely mesmerized and in awe of all these different trucks and diggers and cars that he would normally love as a toy for himself he picked every single toy out he remained focused for the whole entire time At the time we left the toy store we had two trolleys stacked sky high and then we flew them all over to Bali now they did get stuck in customs and we had to pay some taxes on that but that was okay but we actually ended up taking those toys personally ourselves to the Jodie O'Shea orphanage and Rocco handed those toys out to the kids himself Whilst he was a little bit overwhelmed, he was completely aware of what was going on. He happily handed the toys out to the kids. Jody O'Shea is an incredible organisation, beyond inspiring. It actually started up by a British businesswoman living here in Bali. Now, Alison actually met Jody O'Shea in the hospital after she was attacked by the Bali bombing. Jody O'Shea was a 29-year-old Australian girl on holiday in Bali celebrating the success of her dog grooming business. Alison chose to volunteer that day at the hospital where Jodie O'Shea was. She remained at her bedside and when painkillers were finally made available for Jodie, she actually gave them away to the other people in need. Now very sadly, Jodie didn't actually make it. She passed away on the flight on the way back to Australia. And Alison was so amazed by Jodie's sense of generosity, especially when she was in so much pain with over 80% of her body burnt. So from that, Alison decided in memory of Jodie to start up the Jodie O'Shea Orphanage in Bali. And today, the Jodie O'Shea Orphanage in Bali has over 98 kids. When Rocco and I visited this orphanage, I was lost for words. There is the strongest sense of love and community in this orphanage. All the kids look out for each other and look after each other. And the staff are so dedicated and committed to making sure these kids have the best opportunities in life to succeed. The kids are looked after, fed and educated. And when they're, and when they're ready to leave the orphanage, which is between 18 and 21, they're given a job and also a motorbike to share between two people. So if you'd like to help the Jodie O'Shea Orphanage yourself, I will include in the description box below a link and an email address. And things that you can do obviously are donating money, but also if you're in Bali or thinking about going to Bali, you can also come over with some toys for the kids. But most importantly, what is needed the most is actually food. Because there are 98 kids in the orphanage, there are over 300 meals per day served up. And this is one of the biggest challenges for the orphanages. One of the best things that you can do for them is actually go on a grocery shop in Bali for them. And what the orphanage like to do is take some staff and some of the kids with you to do a bit of a road trip or excursion to the local grocery store. The kids can help you pick out all the food that they need. And of course, you can check out the orphanage facilities for yourself. And in the meantime, Rocco and I really hope that you enjoy this vlog where we share with you donating toys to the Jodie O'Shea Orphanage. Going monkey. To the orphanage. And what's, what is the orphanage? Called orphanage where kids live. Yeah, and why do they live there? Because they don't have any mummies or daddies 
Or maybe they go and buy some toys with their mummies and daddies. Oh, and what are we going to do at the toy? Sh uh, what are we going to do at the orphanage? Get some toys for them. Yeah, and where did we buy the toys? From the toy store. Yeah, and did you pick all the toys? Yeah. Yeah, did you have fun doing that? Yes. And I picked my favourite toy out of my train. Yes, but then you bought, bought toys for other kids, didn't you? Yes, and I just went, I dig a dumpster truck. <laughs> well, can you tell me about, are you going to give all the toys to the kids? Yes. Are you excited? I get one for the kid, one to a kid, and two to another kid, and a three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and ten. We have ten. There's, there's ten children that don't have any toys. So we bought a lot. Yeah, we did. Let's, well, let's go, monkey, okay? You ready? Yeah. Yeah.